Go ahead. Hi. During your speech, you made a lot of references to Jewish people as well as certain people in your audience, not Jewish people in general, but certain people, especially in your audience, to Nazis. Now, that is extremely offensive when certain people are German, and they're also extremely offensive to people who have actually suffered under Nazi rule. I don't respect that anymore. I really don't. I don't like and I don't respect the crocodile tears to, con to the crocodile tears. No. Uh, I'm so, folks. Uh, allow me to finish, and allow me to allow me to finish. Listen, sir. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. Uh, sir, sir. I don't like to play. I don't like to play before an audience the Holocaust card. But since now I feel now I feel compelled to. My late father was an Auschwitz. My late mother, please shut up. My late father was in Auschwitz. My late mother was in my diamond concentration camp. Every single member of my family, on my father's side, the Jews did not take arms against the My late father was in Auschwitz concentration camp. My late mother was in my diamond concentration camp. Every single member of my family on both sides was exterminated. Both of my parents were in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. And it's precisely and exactly because of the lessons my parents taught me and my two siblings that I will not be silent when Israel commits its crimes against the Palestinians. And I consider nothing more despicable than to use their suffering and their martyrdom to try to justify the torture, the brutalization, the dem demolition of homes that Israel daily commits against the Palestinians. So I refuse any longer to be intimidated or browbeaten by the tears. If you had any heart in you, you would be crying for the Palestinians, not for what you done. Would you condemn Hamas for what they did? My view is as follows. Number one, as far as the evidence shows now, atrocities occurred on October 7th. The magnitude of the atrocities and the types of atrocities, for example, where children beheaded, where women raped. That remains, so far as I can tell from the evidence, an open question. However, that there were atrocities that occurred, my answer is yes. That's a factual question. And then there is the legal question. As a matter of law, it seems unquestionable that the people who per perpetrated these atrocities would be prosecuted and convicted in a court of law. However, I would say on the legal question, I should think that there would be some mercy shown because those who carried out the atrocities were concentration camp inmates. Number three, which I think is the one that concerns you the most, is the moral question. My basic precept is that there but for the grace of God go I. That is to say, I'm very reluctant to condemn people who are in a position or in a condition such that were I in that position, or condition, I'm not sure what I would do. Now, the 1,500 young men who burst the gates of Gaza, they were born into a concentration camp. They lived for two decades in a concentration camp. They had no past, they had no present, they had no future, they had no jobs. Half of them, according to humanitarian organizations, suffered from what's called severe food insecurity. And then on top of that, as I'm sure you know, Pierce, because you keep up with the news, periodically Israel goes into Gaza and it mows the lawn. And you know what mows the lawn means. It means a high-tech massacre in Gaza. In 2008-9, Operation Cast Lead, 2012, Operation Tiller of Defense, 2014, Operation Protective Edge. And in each of these high-tech massacres visited on the people of Gaza, in some cases hundreds, in some cases thousands of Palestinians are killed. You ask me why I won't condemn them. Because those young men were born into a concentration camp. They were born into among the most dense populated places on God's earth. Half of the population of Gaza is children. 70% are refugees who were expelled from Israel in 1948 and their descendants. 70% of Gaza's youth have no jobs, no future, no nothing. Okay. And the people Professor of Fingerstein. Gaza have the right to hate the people who destroy their lives. Do you honestly think that a leader of Israel is in a position after the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust mm -hmm. to say, you know what, what we should do in retaliate, in reaction, not in, in reaction to this, mm -hmm. is free the Palestinians, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. This is never going to happen, right? Correct. And I'm interested in living in the real world, mm -hmm. as I think you are. If you care about the lives of Palestinians and Israelis and everybody else, that means there has to be some kind of way of resolving this that is based in reality. And in reality, whatever way you look at it, you've got two tribes that absolutely hate each other with good reason for both sides to hate each other because there's been atrocity against both sides throughout history. You may argue about who's responsible and blah, blah, blah. 
blah. Reality on the ground is, this is where we are. So my question is, how should Israel have reacted in that situation in the real world? What in the real world should the Palestinians have done if they tried negotiations, they gestured to supporting either a two-state settlement, here I'm referring to Hamas, or what they called a hudna, a long-term ceasefire, when in March, beginning March 30th, 2018, they try not release because of my encouragement. They tried nonviolent civil resistance. And what was the Israeli response? We know exactly. There's a 250-page single-spaced UN report describing the response. Israel took its best snipers, lined them up along the perimeter fence, and while there was this festive, to describe, to use the word of the UN report, atmosphere among the Palestinians, there was music, there was dancing, there was song. The snipers, I'm quoting the report, intentionally targeted children, medics, journalists, disabled people. They described double amputees. 300 meters from the perimeter fence that Israel shot. When they didn't kill them, they targeted them from the kneecap down to inflict, to use the technical term, life-changing injuries, which for the layperson translates as paralyze them. One Israeli sniper boasted to Haaretz newspaper, Israel's most serious newspaper, he shot 42 kneecaps in one day, 42 children and adults paralyzed for life. And so when all the options of diplomacy, nonviolent civil resistance, Resistance, when they have been exhausted, what were they supposed to do? You know how many citizens, civilians died in the yes. October 7th assault? Yes, but that's not... You know that there are lots of allegations of rape. I don't know how persuaded you are of those. They did find bodies without heads. There were no beheadings Islamic, of infants. There were, there were some beheadings, apparently. The Israelis didn't even claim that in the document they submitted before the ICJ. Go read what your government submitted. It never mentioned beheadings. Well, as far as I know, I read some people it. were beheaded. Yeah. But they, we could bring it up right you now. You also deny that there were rapes there. I didn't deny. I said I've not seen convincing evidence that confirms it. I've said that from day one, and I'll say it today, four and a half months later. Do you know they killed eight or nine hundred civilians in this absolutely yes. that seems to me indisputable oh okay well I'm yes glad that you're i've said something. that i've said that from day one well to be clear you haven't you did a debate i don't remember the talk show but you seem to imply that there was a lot of crossfire and then it might have been the idf that i killed said a lot of i said that there is no question because the names were published in haaretz there is no question that roughly of the 1200 people killed 800 of them were civilians I 850. See 850 fine so i never said that but then i said no we don't know exactly how they were killed but 850 civilians killed no question there there's a lot of tricky language being employed here. Do you think of the 850? Tricky, it's called attaching value to words and not talking like a motor mouth. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, a thousand humanitarian and economic organizations have all reached the same conclusion. It's very simple. The main cause of the disaster in Gaza is Israel's illegal blockade of that parcel of land. Full stop. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's false. Who's wrong? Who's wrong? Is That's wrong. wrong. The World uh, Bank the, the is blockade, wrong. The International the Monetary the blockade, Fund is wrong. They're yes, all wrong. Yes, are yes, they all anti-Semitic? Yes, is that what's going on? I didn't say that. They're wrong. I happen to know so more why about are they the all law wrong? than any of them. That, because the blockade was completely lawful. It was designed to prevent the importation and then the use of rockets okay. against Israel. It's perfectly lawful so for a country to engage every, in a blockade. Every, that is, okay. let, you're not, let me finish. Okay. You can't have a double, Look, Israel Dershowitz. is exposed to a double standard, but Professor we're not letting Dershowitz. you impose a double standard on me. No, I'm going to finish my statement and you're not going to interrupt me. So understand me. The military occupation was lawful. The blockade was lawful. Every country has the right to defend itself from rockets, from terror tunnels, from people coming over the border, murdering and kidnapping people. Those are all lawful. I'm telling you that as an expert in international law and the law of war. Okay. If you want to dispute me, get an expert who knows something about international law, okay. not, a, not, not a polemicist Professor, like Professor you. Professor Dershowitz, okay, Professor Dershowitz, just as a matter of fact, I teach the laws of war. I've been teaching it yeah, for the last five years. To yeah, my, you don't to my understanding, you're, you're, you're biased. You're, okay, Professor Dershowitz, okay, Professor Dershowitz, let's agree. I'm completely ignorant. Let's take that as a point of departure. How does it come to be yes. that every humanitarian and political body in the world has declared that the blockade of Gaza constitutes collective punishment and therefore is a violation a breach of international law, a war crime under international law. How did that come to pass? They're wrong. How is it you, that first every... First of all, you're wrong. I, they're all you're, wrong. No, you're not, you're not wrong. right. You're not Dershowitz. right. No, no, no. Except you're wrong. Sir, you're wrong sir. in describing... Professor you're, Dershowitz. You're wrong in describing name, name every one, group. There are many name groups. Me one, okay. Professor Dershowitz, name me one legal international yeah. legal body or human rights organization. Name me one. I'll take the pause. Name me one that, what? that says the blockade of Gaza is not collective punishment. Name me one. The Lawfare Project in the United States. Um, the law the, uh, the Lawfare uh, Project. I said name me one the, international the, legal or political body. It is. One. It is. No, Everybody's it is listening now. Body. Pierce Morgan it's has a very large audience. Name me it's, one. It's name me international, one international look, or legal legal or political body that says the blockade of Gaza is legal. Name me one. It is, it is one. legal. And every or, every organization that I have been associated with, the Lawfare Project, the project run I by a woman that. named Leitner, an I international that. project, were all, all have all concluded I, that the
the blockade I is said legal. One also, legal or the Israeli Supreme <laughs> Professor Morris, yes. you just said I would condemn and I anytime condemn. Israel deliberately attacks civilians. Yes. Okay? The problem, Professor Morris, is over and over again, you claim in the face of overwhelming evidence that they didn't attack civilians. That's not true. I've said really? Israel has attacked Profes civilians. Professor in Kibia, Israel attacked right, civilians. Right, right, right. And I've written extensively about okay, it. I know that. In Kafir Qasim, they uh, killed uh, civilians. Yes. And, I've and now let's, let's. So you're, you're, you're just eliminating. Okay. You're selecting. Okay. As, as Stephen yeah, says, yeah. you cherry pick. Uh, if I were you, before you, do you cherry okay. pick. Let's fast forward when you were an adult. What did you say about the 1982 Lebanon war? What did I say? You don't remember? Okay. <laughs> Allow me. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you said that you are not a person of double standards, unlike people like Muin. You hold high a single standard and you condemn deliberate Israeli attacks on when they occurred, yeah. And I would say that's true for the period up till 1967. And I think it's accurate, your account of the first intifada. There, it seems to me you were in conformity with most mainstream accounts. And the case of the first intifada, you also used, surprisingly, you used Arab human rights sources like al Haq, which I think Muin worked for during the first intifada. That's true. But then something very strange happens. So let's illustrate it. So this is what you have to say about Israel's invasion of Lebanon in 1982. He said Israel was reluctant to harm civilians, sought to avoid casualties on both sides, and took care not to harm Lebanese and Palestinian civilians. You then went on to acknowledge the massive use of IDF firepower against civilians during the siege of Beirut, which traumatized Israeli society. Marx, Mars quickly enters the caveat that Israel, quote, tried to pinpoint military targets, but inevitably many civilians were hit. That's your description of the Lebanon War. As I say, that's when I first got involved in the conflict. I am a voracious reader. I read everything on the Lebanon War. I would say there's not a single account of the Lebanon War in which the estimates are between 15 and 20,000 Palestinian and Lebanese were killed, overwhelmingly civilians, the biggest bloodletting until the current Gaza genocide, a biggest bloodletting. I would say I can't think of a single mainstream account that remotely approximates what you just said. So leaving aside, I can name the books, voluminous, huge volumes. I'll just take one example. Now you will remember, because I think you served in Lebanon in 82, am I correct on that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you will remember that Dov Yarmia kept a war diary. So with your permission, allow me to describe what he wrote during his diary. So he writes, the war machine of the IDF is galloping and trampling over the conquered territory, demonstrating a total insensitivity to the fate of the Arabs who are found in its path. A PLO run hospital suffered a direct hit. Thousands of refugees are returning to the city. When they arrive at their homes, many of which have been destroyed or damaged, you hear their cries of pain and their howls over the deaths of their loved ones. The air is permeated with the smell oh, of corpses. We... Destruction and yeah, yeah, no, death are continuing. Does that sound like what, your what description the of you're... the Lebanon War? The, uh, forget my description. The forget point, it? The, the point you're Words making... Words are in print. The, we can't no, just no, let forget No, let me them. just finish my sentence. The point you're making, it, it, which you somehow forget, is that there are Israelis who strongly criticize their own side and describe how Israelis are doing things which they regard as immoral. You don't find that on the Arab side. I'm talking about don't you, that. Mr. Morris. I'm not talking about death. I'm talking about you, the historian. How did you depict the Lebanon War? I believe, I believe yeah. that the Israeli military tried to avoid committing a civilian casualty. So Dev, as, as, I as, well. as, well. as, as I think they all the, the, all the accounts by Robert Fisk and Pity the Robert Nation. Fisk is yeah, an anti, all, all anti the, I know. Anti-Zionist journalist. I know. Has always been. Right. So that's, always why, been. that's why you can say with such confidence that you don't commit, you don't condemn deliberate Israeli attacks. There weren't any. Because there weren't any. No, I didn't say there weren't any. Yeah, you and didn't? You agreed that I have condemned Israeli attacks Yes, there are civilians. I never quarrel with facts. Your description of the 1982 war is so shocking it makes my innards writhe. And then your description of the second intifada, your description of defensive shield, when they, they, when are, the they are bombing, worse, is, when they Arab are suicide worse bombers, than apologetics. When Arab suicide That's bombers like were destroying Jew, Jews in masses no, and buses no, and in no, restaurants. No, That's you, the second intifada. Do you remember you, that? You could try suicide everything. bombers in Jerusalem's buses and I, restaurants. I am completely and aware of that. But, you, well, but if you forgot the numbers, no, I don't forget it was three to one. The they, number, they killed yeah, mostly armed no, Palestinian gunmen. That's what you say in your book, but that's not what Amnesty the International said, that's not what Human Rights Watch said. I don't said. remember what that's they said. Not, I do. Benny Morris now says, we don't know whether Israel has nuclear weapons. Well, that's a very odd thing for him to say, because Benny Morris has been explicitly blackmailing the West since 2008, saying, if you don't, meaning the United States, if the U.S. doesn't join in an attack on Iran, we, meaning Israel, have no alternative except to use non-conventional, that is to say, nuclear weapons. So, if I can quote him now, it is doubtful that its conventional capabilities will be sufficient to destroy the Iranian nuclear project. 
then non-conventional weaponry will have to be used to stymie the project. And many innocent Iranians will die, but the Iranians will have brought this upon themselves by bringing to power and leaving in power a leadership that will have forced Israelis to do what was necessary in order to survive. So Benny Morris, who doesn't know whether Israel possesses nuclear weapons, nonetheless says Israel will have to use non-conventional weapons. And he says many Iranians will have to die, maybe the millions, maybe tens of millions, but they deserved it because they, well, that's what he said. Mr. Morris, you can laugh till kingdom come, but I'm quoting your words. But he said, that's okay because they voted for the regime. No, this is is absurd. This is absurd. I I said Israel, and let me respond. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Norman, I think Benny Morris shouldn't be able to respond to your direct charge there because you accused him of laughing at it. I didn't charge, I quoted it. You said he was laughing about it. Let me get Benny Morris to explain what he's doing. As is your want, you didn't quote me properly. What I said was that if Israel is unable with conventional weapons to destroy the Iranian project, and if the Americans don't do it in conjunction with Israel or by themselves, Israel will be forced to use non-conventional weapons and attack the nuclear installations. Not, not, not kill millions of Iranians. No, no, no. You said millions of Iranians. I've never said anything. I have never said. I have never. I have never said anything about millions of Iranians. This is pure nonsense. This is pure. Uh, Norman, you, Norman, you, you are lying. You, drop, you are lying. What do you think happens Norman, if you drop, you are lying. Professor Morris, what do you no, think happens if you drop, if you drop on, nuclear if weapons if you, on Iran? What do you think happens? No, not on what Iran, not on Iran. You're misquoting, you're misquoting. Norman, you are misquoting. I'm quoting you, Professor said, Morris. For you to say we can't trust Iran after Israel's record on nuclear weapons, as even you so shamefacedly and shamelessly say, I don't know if Israel has nuclear weapons. You really don't. You advocate Israel's use of them in the event that the U.S. doesn't join the attack on Iran, but then you don't know if Israel has nuclear weapons. You're such a shameless liar, which is a sad fact. I spent many, many a week reading your books. I spent many, many a month reading your books and to see how you have degenerated into a state propagandist and a both, a both, a both faced liar. No, very, no, no, very sad. Absurd, very they, sad. Every time they target a kid, I'm sure they believe it's Hamas. When they kid, yeah, when they, yeah, when they kill the four kids in the, they believe, yeah, they I know they believe it, me. even though they were you diminutive know that, size, you know, even though they were diminutive size. You don't see the size. Let's leave it aside. Oh, I know here. what he's quoting. Here. Here. You've lied about this particular yeah. instance in the past. Oh, Those kids weren't just on the beaches as often stated in articles. Those kids were literally coming out of a previously identified Hamas compound that they have operated from. They literally, Mr. Borelli, Mr. Borelli, with all due respect, with all due respect, you're such a fantastic moron. It's terrifying. That wharf was filled with journalists. There were tens scores of journalists. That was an old fisherman's shack. What are you talking about? It's so painful. It's naval. so painful to listen to this idiocy. And to but be clear, me, on the other side, you're implying okay. that a strike was okayed okay. on the Israeli okay. side when they said we're just going to kill four hey, Palestinian hey, people today for no hey, reason. Hey, do you believe that? You know, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Okay. Right, right. Okay. Do you believe that? Go tell a journalist. Do you think that they would kill children? Here we go. I will never answer that. I will answer the question. Pilots will outkill I will even answer And it was because that was a strike. That was a drone strike. That was a proof all the way up the chain that we're going to kill children and kill Palestinian people today. Answer, or do you want your motor mouth to go? Okay, answer. In 2018, <laughs> there was the Great March of Return in Gaza. By all reckonings of human rights organizations and journalists who were there, it was overwhelmingly nonviolent. It was organized said, by the Hamas. What, whoever organized it. organized it, by it was, Satan. Let's start Satan, with yeah. Hamas. Okay, no, by Satan. Yeah. I agree. Let's, let's go for the big one. The big Megillah. It's Satan, okay? Overwhelmingly nonviolent. Resembled at the beginning the first, in, the there, first Intifada. They represent the first. There, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, not bombs. But they tried to make okay. holes in the fence, okay. Okay. obviously. Okay. Let's continue. So, But I'm not sure Israel behaved morally in that Okay, respect. okay. No, no, no. I, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm willing to grant you. Please. Allow me to. You don't have to pursue this. I'm willing to grant you. Allow me to finish. I don't know anything about this. I'd like to. Okay, as you know, along the Gaza perimeter, there was Israel's best trained snipers, correct? I don't know best trained, there were snipers. Fine. Sniper. Okay, all right? Yeah, because, hey, it. laugh. It's hilarious. The story's so funny. You're lying about it's the so French Return had aspects okay. of violence to it. Okay. Even the UN okay. says it okay. themselves. Okay. Okay. But you only select what the UN says that you like. See, the problem, Mr. Morelli, is you don't know the ling- English language. You don't I can read from the UN website itself. In regards to the Great March of Return, they said, while the vast majority of protesters have acted in a peaceful manner, during most protests, dozens have approached the fence and attempted to damage it, burning fires, throwing stones, and Molotov cocktails towards Israel. Israeli forces okay. applying incendiary okay. heights and balloons okay. into Israeli territory. The latter resulted yeah, in extensive but, damage but to know, agricultural land and nature reserves inside okay. Israel and risked the lives yeah, of Israeli Mr. civilians. Mr. Some instances of shooting and an explosives yeah, are also Talk fast, fast, talk fast. I'm just okay, trying to think that you're coherent. I'm just reading from okay. the UN. Yeah, but you see, you, like you, got, you, got the the you, you got the months wrong. You got the months wrong. We're talking about the beginning in March 30th, 2018. You just described that March as mostly peaceful. Okay, allow me to finish. So there were the snipers. Now you find it so far-fetched. Israelis purposely, deliberately targeting civilians? That's such a far-fetched 
first idea, an overwhelmingly nonviolent march. What did the international what investigation... Was a march? It was a campaign. Yeah, which whatever you want to call it. For months. Whatever you want to call it. For months. Yeah. What did the UN investigation find? Well, he just read it. it. I read the report. I don't read things off of those machines. I read the report. What did it find? Brace yourself. You thought it was so funny, the idea of IDF targeting civilians. It found... Go look this up on your machine. I already know what you're going to say. You're going to say it found that only children, one or two of them were, were justified children, killings. Targeted journalists, targeted medics, and here's the funniest one of all. It's so hilarious. They targeted disabled people who were 300 meters away from the fence and just standing by trees. This is true. My criticism of Norman Finkelstein is slightly more prosaic. I have no problem at all with writers being provocative. It's what I am paid to do. But you're not very good at it. You're a hack writer. You made a factual error. You're certainly entitled to your opinion. I don't know of any expertise. I don't know. I don't know of any expertise you have in the topic. You understated by a large number the number of Holocaust okay, survivors. That's the last question. Okay. Very briefly. I would like to answer. Very that. briefly, please. I don't claim at all to be an authority in the Nazi Holocaust. The book, The Holocaust Industry, is not about the Nazi Holocaust. It's a book about how the Holocaust has been rendered in popular opinion and in so-called scholarship. The figure I got of under 100,000 survivors of the Nazi Holocaust, it didn't come from me. It came from Raoul Hilberg. I think you'll agree if you have any knowledge of the Nazi Holocaust, which is doubtful, but if you have any knowledge of the Nazi Holocaust, you'll know that the world's leading authority in the Nazi Holocaust, bar none, was Raoul Hilberg. He was in a class all his own. Raoul Hilberg praised the Holocaust industry. In fact, he said, my conclusions in the book were conservative. Now, Raoul Hilberg was begged by the U.S. Holocaust Museum and his close friend, Elie Wiesel, to remove his name from the book. And he said, no, I refuse to remove my name from the book because what Finkelstein wrote is true. He said Finkelstein's place in history as a historian is secure. And what was done to me was a travesty. So when you come along and say you're a hack writer, I attach as much value to that as I attach to the dust on this floor. <laughs> We have now seen incident after incident where entire families are vaporized in single strikes. Who is We've in the seen. families? Who lives in the house family inside? Members. No, family or members. next to the house family in which members. these uh, families We are have killed. seen incident after... Do you know that Hamasniks weren't in that house? Do you know that their ammunition burn. dumps weren't Why in those houses? Why do I have houses? to prove a negative? You're saying that they deliberately targeted well, families. You know, if Israel you... wanted to kill civilians in, in Gaza, they could have killed 500,000 by now with the number of strikes they've done. And therefore... And therefore and the fact that they've actually, only killed a certain only, small number... 30,000 is a small number. Small number in you consider 30,000 small, small number in proportion You're, over four months probably is an indication that it's targeted and that there are Hamas targets in these okay. places. So I've given, 12, you know, children is only, and if that's the case, why is it, yeah, you said only. Professor Morris, here's a question for you. If we take every combat zone in the world for the past three years, Every combat zone in the world. In Vietnam, okay. the Americans killed I said, a million I'm not people. Well, they could have killed 40 million. I wasn't, yeah, right. I was again in the anti war movement. Don't the strap me. A million people uh, in fine, 30 million Russians were killed so, in during World War II, so everything else is irrelevant. Not here's everything. a question, no, Professor Mars. Professor, Professor Mars, here's a question. It's very perplexing. If you take every combat zone in the world for the past three years and you multiply the number of children killed, by four, every combat zone in the world, you get Gaza. Okay, so when you what said proposed to prove, okay, I'm going to tell you, just you're shut relying, up. You're relying on Hamas you, numbers. No, I'm not Hamas relying. Numbers I'm relying on the numbers that everybody else. I'm relying on the numbers. Okay, okay, even if we take the numbers, though, what is that? Those okay. are Hamas numbers. Okay, okay, which may not fine, be true. Fine. They could invent any, anything because you I know think, that they are an mendacious organization. I know mendacious, believe me. You like words. Mendacious, mendacious as in mendacious the Israeli mendacious. Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So here's the thing. You say they could have killed 500,000, but they only killed only. That's your word. I'm they not only killed 30,000. You believe that they deliberately so here, targeted here. civilians. They okay. could have, would have killed many, no, many more. See, the fact no, is Mar that they don't deliberately Morris, target civilians. Professor Morris, for a, his, don't understand for a historian, society. I don't, you don't want to understand, understand Israeli society. You don't you want to know the truth. I don't want to. I don't want to get inside their heads. That's the problem. 90% of the historian, A good historian tries to get into the heads of there's a the, limit. The there's a limit. There's a limit. When ninety percent, when ninety percent of Israelis think that Israel is using enough or too little force in Gaza, I don't want to get inside that head. Forty percent think that Israel is using insufficient force in Gaza. I don't want to get inside that head. I don't want to get inside the head of people who think they're using insufficient force Historians against the population, understand. against the population half of which is children. I don't want to get inside that head. Why is that illegal I, I to blockade I, Gaza? I'll tell you why. You don't rocket okay, your neighbor. You I'll rocket your neighbor. I'll, expect I'll, consequences. I'll, I'll tell you why. Expect consequences. Uh, but that works both ways. Yes. I know, we're not Prefer expect that. Professor, Mar both, Professor Mar both ways. I'll tell you why. Because every human rights humanitarian and UN organization They're in the world irrelevant. has said, has not, said that the blockade Nobody cares is, a about form of, is a form of collective punishment, Nobody cares which is about illegal amnesty. under international Forget law. The legal. The word you, illegal think, is... you think a blockade... <laughs> you which, don't understand okay. the way the world works. Yeah. And, These and things are irrelevant. And you think confining, because that's the blockade. Yes, you don't think Confining a million children. That's the choice of Hamas. Confining... A million Choice. children 
in what the economist calls okay. a human rubbish the, sheet. The economists supported he, Israel in this war yeah. and continue okay. to support Israel. What the International Committee of the Red Cross called a sinking ship, what the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights called a toxic slum. You think it is a slum? Yeah, you, it's you, a slum. you think but it's caused under by international law? You think it's legitimate? Forget to the law. Hey, I know you want to forget the law. What it's the morality? one thing that every is, what about it's what every Israeli fears the most. What? The law. As, no, as no, no. Sippy Lipney said, <laughs> I studied international law. I oppose international law. Of course you don't want to hear about the law. Then it's got nothing so, to do with anything. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah. Then don't complain about October 7th. If you don't want to, you if you want to say, forget about the law, All I said was they then, like then there is no international humanitarian law. There's no distinction between civilians and combatants. There, there should be. And so how be, no, now law. you're doing what Moeen said. You're becoming very selective about the law. If you want to forget about the law, Hamas had People every right to do what board. it did. It had every right to do what it did, according to you, not to me, because you want to forget the law.